I got it. I got it, everybody. We can increase our prices by another 20% and just blame inflation. Welcome, everybody, to another segment of Cypher Report. Cypher Report brings you the news, information, and analysis you need in order to decrypt the world. Today, we'll be covering the economy since we signed off in December of 2023. But before we get into that, please make sure to hit that bell for the algorithms. It really does help us out. Let's get into it. We start off today's segment with a short video from Dryden Pence, Chief Investment Officer at Pence Capital Management Group. What's going to happen is 2024 is going to go probably down as a period of time where we create tremendous wealth, there's going to be a large wealth effect uh, in the country because you're beginning to see 60% of, of households own stocks, the market's doing well, the economy's doing well, more people are working, making more money than at any other time in our history. And it's beginning to actually bubble up and people are beginning to gradually start feeling better about what's going on. So we're kind of positive, uh, broad based across the market for 2024. You know, we, we added 2.7 million jobs uh, in, in the last year. I mean, that's like taking the entire labor force of South Carolina and adding it, right? So we've, we've created an entire new labor force, 2.7 million jobs. And if you think about the wealth and the income that has been made since, you know, the, the pandemic, right? We've added $2.5 trillion. That is basically like we've added the entire economy of Italy. That's the eighth largest economy in the world. So where is the economy right now? Well, first of all, the U.S. economy grew faster than expected in the fourth quarter of 2023 amid strong consumer spending. And this defied dire predictions of a recession in 2023, with growth for the full year coming at a healthy 2.5% GDP. Gross domestic product in the last quarter increased at a 3.3% annualized rate. The Commerce Department Bureau of Economic Analysis said last Thursday in its advanced estimate of fourth quarter GDP. The economy grew at a 4.9% pace in the third quarter. Economists polled by Reuters had forecasted GDP advancing at a 2% rate, beating expectations again. Estimates ranged anywhere from 0.8% to 2.8%. Pace. The economy is expanding at a pace above what Fed officials regard as non inflationary growth rate at around 1.8%. Growth in 2023 beat 2022's growth rate of 1.9% as well. The positive news coming out of the economy has stunned captains of industry and some economists who had called for a downturn since mid 2022. Look, I think, David, that a recession is almost inevitable. David, it seemed like it's been only a matter of months until we tip into a recession for several months, if not a full year now at this point. Powell says there is no such thing, no, in, uh, no, no recession expected. Yeah, so we're very much against this view that you can get a, just a soft landing, a benign scenario that allows inflation to get back to 2%. The labor market's too tight in our view, and our worry is that core inflation just gets stuck between 3 and 4%. So the Fed really does need to engineer a much greater slowdown to get inflation back to 2%. Part of the economy's stamina reflects labor market's resilience, marked by low layoffs and strong wage gains, which are underpinning consumer spending. The Labor Department, in a separate report on Thursday, said initial claims for state unemployment benefits increased by 25,000 to a seasonally adjusted 214,000 for the week ended in January 20th. Economists, for their part, had been basing their gloomy predictions off of the fact that the Federal Reserve had been increasing rates rapidly since the end of the pandemic and expected this to dampen demand for consumer goods and services. Now, most of those economists have walked back their recession calls and are expecting the economy to grow at a slow pace in 2024. The Fed is expected to keep rates where they are at next week's meeting. The current rate is 5.25 to 5.5 percentage range. We at Cypher Report have been saying for months that the Federal Reserve is not likely to raise rates beyond the 5.25 to the 5.5 percent range. We said that there was a slight possibility if things started to uh, change with the inflation and it started to accelerate that the Fed could do another 2.5 basis point range increase. But we said that that was not likely given what we saw 
in the economy and how inflation had been tamed for the most part. This doesn't mean that inflation is not still bad or that it's not still going up or not still happening. What it does mean is that inflation's growth rate has slowed and actually started to go down, which is known as disinflation. But continuing on, though, with the GDP report also showing inflation pressure subsiding last quarter, the central bank is widely anticipated to start cutting rates sometime in the first half of this year. For our part, we at Cypher Report don't expect the Federal Reserve to actually cut rates in the first half of the year. We are expecting the Federal Reserve to keep the powder dry, as they say, and maintain rates of where they are unless there seems to be rumbling in the economy that a recession is about to happen. All across financial Twitter and economists and people that just want juicy rates to help gin up their um, their earnings, they're, tr they're calling for the Fed to cut because it seems that inflation is tamed and that they're worried, like we are, that the Federal Reserve might maintain rates too high for too long and push us into a recession. But given demographics where they are with people in the prime age range of 25 to 52 making up the majority of the population right now we have this kind of curve going on with population i don't expect that to happen and i also don't expect a recession to happen this year absent some unforeseen circumstance like another global war or something of that nature so don't expect the federal reserve to actually cut rates until if they do at all this year, it will be probably quarter two, maybe the beginning of quarter three when they start to do so. So maybe around August, they might cut a, a few basis points off and say, we're doing this because we don't want to make the economy skid into a recession and we want to you know, do whatever it is that we can to prevent that. But like I said, I don't expect there to be rate cuts in the in the first quarter of this year or the first half of this year. It'll be in the second half, if at all. Uh, as we go on. And one of the primary reasons for this is the fact that consumer confidence continues to go up month over month. Now, according to reporting from Barron's, consumer sentiment in the United States jumped 13% in January. That's the highest level in almost two and a half years. The index of consumer sentiment blew past expectations to reach 78.8% in January, making up a steep rise from December when the figure was just at 69.7%. That's almost 10 percentage points increases. The data is likely to be seen as good news for President Joe Biden's 2024 election campaign. The president's campaign has been struggling to convince American consumers that he has gotten inflation under control and that he has continued to support economic growth. But it might be a tough message to sell since good economic news in the current high interest rate environment may reduce chances of early interest rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. People's sentiment about the economy is driven by two things, gas prices because they see it every day and the ability to buy a home or afford rent. Now we're seeing gas prices start to come down with the national average right now right around 314 and a lot of that is caused by high uh, gas prices in the Pacific Northwest. But in places like Texas and other uh, Midwest and Southern states, gas prices are below $3. In most of Texas, uh, I see gas prices hovering around 260 or so. So we're seeing gas prices come down. But with interest rates being where they are, the ability for people to buy a home or refinance a home for home improvement or other things continues to be slightly out of reach for most consumers because interest rates are high, which makes the cost of buying a home more expensive and refinancing uh, out of reach. So that is why we're having consumer sentiment tamp down a bit. So if the Federal Reserve does cut rates, expect consumer confidence to be juiced up from that as well. For its part, the Fed determined to sustainably lower inflation by keeping rates at a higher level. That means borrowing costs will remain elevated for both consumers and businesses, which tamp down demand. The January consumer sentiment score figure shows that the sharp increase in December was no fluke, survey of consumer director Joanne Su said in a statement. She added that it was the highest level for consumer sentiment since July of 2021. Quote, there was a broad consensus of improved sentiment across age, income, education, and geography. Democrats and Republicans alike showed their most favorable readings since the summer of 2021. This means that consumers are feeling better about the economy and it's showing in how consumers are spending. Consumer views, she said, were helped by confidence that inflation has turned a corner alongside improving income expectations. 
In other words, we're seeing consumer sentiment go up because one, inflation is down. Two, people are expecting to be able to make more than where inflation is. And that was true when comparing wages from 2019 to today. With the Treasury Department reporting that most Americans earn more today than they did in 2019 by about 1.9%. But what is driving inflation? Well, we have reporting and surveys out that show that it's not the economy, it's greed. According to reporting from Fortune, after falling from its blistering pace in 2022, consumer inflation has gotten stubbornly stuck in the 3% range, rising unexpectedly for the first two months even as wholesaler prices stay flat or fall. The fact that wholesaler prices remain stable or fell is proof that there might be a bit of greedflation. This is offering a bit of evidence that excessive profit taking is happening above the raw cost of goods. And yet another progressive economic study, this time from Groundwork Collaborative, sheds lights on the problem. The study argues that more than half of consumer price increases in the middle of last year were due to excessive profits. Corporate profits, by the way, remain at an all-time high. Corporate profits drove 53% of inflation during the second and third quarters of 2023, and more than one-third since the start of the pandemic. That's a massive jump from four decades prior to the pandemic, when profits were just above 11% of price growth. Businesses were really, really quick when input costs went up to pass that on to consumers. But had they passed on those increases alone, inflation would have maybe been one to three points lower. Liz Panaki, a strategic advisor at Groundwork and one of the report's authors told Fortune. That high profit, lower volume dynamic is even hurting workers who are being scheduled for fewer shifts to service fewer shoppers. In the short term, that trend may manifest itself in some positive changes, like a four-day work week. But in the longer term, companies will refuse to give up their fat profit margins without a fight and will try to cut wherever possible. Consumer-facing companies have been upfront with their investors about their price-rising strategies, and they don't seem interested in a reversal. PepsiCo's CFO Hugh Johnston said last spring that the company would, quote, increase margins during the course of the year. Construction material giant Holcomb said in October that it raises its margins to make up for falling demand. Man, it almost seems like they're trying to keep profits as high as they can for as long as they can and blame Biden and inflation for that. Don't let them lie to you. Look at the numbers. That's where the truth is. Continuing on though, and consumer products giant Procter & Gamble this summer boasted of a 800 million profit increase thanks to falling commodity costs that it would not pass on to consumers. Again, they are trying to milk us for everything that they can. All this adds up to inflated consumer prices, according to Groundwork. Company profits are, quote, probably why we saw inflation in the realm of 7 to 9% for a while instead of the 5 to 7% range, Ankati told Fortune. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Oh no, God! Continuing on, she stated, quote, We're in the 3% range. If you took corporate profits away, we'd already be at the 2% target that the Federal Reserve has set, she added. And it's not just the left making this argument either. The Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City has found corporate profits playing an outsized role in price growth. The Kansas City Fed in a recent study found that growth in markups accounted for more than half of consumer price inflation for 2021, a substantially higher contribution than during the preceding decade. What does that mean? That means, hey, the media was talking about inflation and how there's going to be inflation because of all the money that the government gave out to people and people are sitting on fat stacks of cash and just running to the store to get everything that they ever wanted and we had a pandemic and the stuff was not there and so we didn't have all of the the goods to sell people so of course the companies are going to raise prices they they heard that and they're like i got it i got it everybody we can increase our prices by another 20 percent and just blame inflation take it to the bank Woohoo! And that's exactly what they did. And that's why we had a K-shaped recovery, because of greedflation. But wait, there's more. Last month, the largest review to date of greedflation from the Institute of Public Policy Research and Commonwealth looked at 1,300 companies across four continents. 
They concluded that the profiteering by a relatively small set of companies pushed up consumer prices significantly higher than would have happened from supply chain shocks alone. Classical economists argue that blaming companies for trying to boost profits is like blaming the rain for falling. Profit seeking is their mission, and it was to be expected from the unleashed pent up demand that exploded in the post pandemic economy. But increasingly, mainstream as well as progressive economists are making the case that prices just didn't need to go up that high. So remember, kids, when people say that, hey, maybe shareholder capitalism is a little bit not good, they're not lying to you. But that concludes this segment of the Cypher Report. Please hit that like button for the algorithms. It really does help us out. And join us next time to get the news, information, and analysis you need to decrypt the world.